Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to be turning my sketch into a vector. I'm going to make a sort of digital inking using the new Doodler tool in MakoFun. So you can see here I have my pencil doodle sketch that I drew and I'll be using the Doodler tool to make it into a vector drawing that I'll be able to download as an SVG. I like simple tools like MakoFun. It, there's no fuss, there's no complicated learning curve. You can just dive in and start drawing. Uh, I think this is something that everyone from a beginner to a professional can appreciate. We'll get started right from an empty document here. I have a document I created and I'm gonna bring in a image of my pencil sketch. I've already brought this in before, so I'm gonna make this pretty big on my artboard. And I'm gonna change the opacity right up here. We just need this as a bit of a background guide for working on top. That looks pretty good there. And what I'm gonna do is just lock this layer right there. So that way I'm not accidentally selecting this as I'm working. So we're gonna to switch to the Doodler tool. And the tools are pretty simple in the Doodler section here. You can either be drawing with lines or shapes. Lines is you just draw with a line, obviously. And shapes is you are drawing a line, but then it's going to fill the shape and you're only working with the fills, with the uh, shapes section here. You can change your color right up here. Uh, you can draw in any color you want, but I'm going to be sticking with black and white for this one. You can change your size, the size of your brush right up here. So you can be drawing, you know, nice and, and thin, or you can be drawing really thick, you know, like a marker. Uh, I think I'm gonna stick mostly with a kind of medium-ish width <laughs> for the most of this drawing. Uh, you can change the shape of your brush tip. I like this one, the default one, because it starts out thin and it ends kind of thicker. You can see that, how it has a bit of a thin line at the start, but any kind of end point is a uh, more rounded shape. That works nicely for digital inking, in my opinion. So you have this option right here to simulate pressure, which means if you don't select that, it's just going to be the same thickness the entire time. But if you do select that, the, the speed that you move your uh, cursor around on the screen determines how thick or thin it is. Smoothing is just what it sounds like. It smooths your stroke. So if you turn that down, you can see here, if I do a rough stroke, it leaves the roughness. But if you turn that up and I'm doing a rough stroke, it kind of smudges it along and makes it a lot smoother and cleaner. This is a good option right here. You can paint over top or paint behind. So let's say you draw a shape and then you want to fill it with a different color, you can change the paint behind there. So that way you're painting behind your first object for just doing the fill. And right up here, this is a sort of fill tool. So you can select a color and then you drag this onto whatever you want to fill. I'm not gonna be using that in this illustration, but you can play around with that if you wanna give it a try. Okay, so let's get started drawing. We wanna paint over. Let's just do a couple quick test strokes here to see how it feels. I do want a little bit of smoothing on my brush, especially for the kind of longer strokes that I'm gonna be making on this girl's hair here. I'm gonna go a little bit less on the sides. I can always add a bit of a thicker outline to the, to the very edge when I'm done. I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna start on a low size for the brush and then add a, a bit of a thicker outline. All right, so let's dive in and, uh, and get doodling here. You don't have to do your long strokes all in one stroke. Kind of just take little little strokes along and work as slow or as quick as you feel comfortable. I think I'm actually going to reduce the uh, stroke thickness just a little bit to get into some of these finer details. Yeah, that feels good. So if you draw a line you're not happy with, uh, you can just use the standard undo hotkey on the keyboard. That's uh, Control Z on a PC. I think you need to be super accurate right at the start because you can really kind of build it up, build up the details as you as you want. You can try stuff and just undo it as you're working. There's no wrong way to do this kind of thing, in my opinion. Slowly but surely. See here, if I start on this side, it puts the thin stroke over here. And if I start on this side, it puts the thin part of the stroke on this side. I definitely want it to be on the outside. This is an eyebrow, so it should be kind of thinner over here and thicker over here. 
You change your zoom down here, so I'm going to zoom in a bit here as I'm working on the finer details of her face. I do want to keep this little border that I have going on around the outside here. I think that's going to look pretty cool. Doesn't need to be super neat. Sometimes with this uh, line work kind of sketchy style, it actually looks better when it's a little bit, a little bit wonky. You can tell it's drawn by hand. Zoom right in on this area as I'm working. I'm actually going to increase the smoothing just a little bit. I want to play around with the, the different options here and see if I can come up with something that feels just right. And go around and do all these spiders right at the end. I'm just going to work on the girl for now. A little bit of a spiral action at the bottom of her hair here. There we go. And we'll finish off her body. And we're going to put some stripes on her dress. She's going to be wearing a striped dress here. So I want the uh, actual stripes to be nice and thin. Maybe I'll go with a four for these. Yeah, that's the right idea. I want it to look definitely hand-drawn. Keep some of that hand-drawn charm of the original sketch, I think. And her other arm down here. Okay, that's the basics there. And I think I'm going to start adding a bit more detail into the, the hair itself. I originally envisioned this hair at the back here would be darker than this hair here. So I'm going to scribble in with the um, line tool up here and just add some texture. I want this primarily to be an, an inking style illustration, so it needs to have that kind of dark comic outline, but I think you can add some detail in here without going crazy with like the cross hatching and stuff. Maybe in the future I'll do a separate tutorial for, uh, for how to do cross hatching in this kind of a program. So I'm just gonna scribble in some, uh, some shadow areas here. Oh yeah, that looks really good. It's so easy. You know, this is what's great about this kind of tool is, you know, you don't need to have any experience working with digital art programs to use this kind of service. You can just dive in and start working. So, you know, if, if somebody wants to know what's a, what's a program I could use to do simple illustrations and drawings and inking style pictures, you can just say, use a tool like this. You don't need any sort of fancy programs or software or anything like this, especially when it's, you know, free to use and easy to access. You can just do it right in your browser. It's awesome. All right, there we go. That's one side done. Some more detail up here. Let's figure out what I'm gonna do on this side. I want it to be the same kind of thing, but slightly lighter. So I think I'm gonna go with longer strokes. I think with this, I wanna move in the direction of her hair, make it feel natural. That's the right idea. Didn't want to really do too much cross hatching, but I really like the vibe of this. And I think if I add a nice thick outline when I'm done, it'll still have that kind of digital inking feel to it without feeling too much like a uh, like a sketchy drawing. It's just an experiment, really. We'll see how it goes. Way down here, change the angle of this uh, these little textured lines on her hair, and I try to make it look like a natural swoosh in the hair. There we go, that's feeling pretty good. It almost has a uh, classic children's book illustration vibe to it when you work in a style like this. Okay, let's, uh, let's tighten up some of these kind of wonky edges and really emphasize the um, the dark outlines that I wanted to have around the outside for that digital inking kind of vibe. There we go, that feels pretty good. So I'm just gonna go around now and add in these little spider characters. There we go. Should I put one on her head? Let's put one right on her head. This is a girl who loves her spiders. I love spiders too. Wow, look at those legs, they turned out great. So with this stroke here, it's thin where you start the stroke and it's thicker near the outside. So you start near the body, go to the outside, it adds a thin to thick effect. Looks, looks really, really great. 
So quick, so easy. Another good part about uh, using a tool like Mockelfund is you don't need a fancy computer to run it. You know, this will run in basically any computer, any browser. There is no real requirements that would prevent most people from being able to access this. There we go. And we'll do the little strings, the little webs, I should say, from the spiders. These I want to be as straight as possible, so I'm going to turn this moving all the way up. That's the right idea. Perfect. Okay, one more thing I want to do before I'm finished is to add a bit more thickness to the outside here to make it more of a, a kind of proper border. So I'm going to use a really thick, really thick brush, something like that. And I'm going to reduce the smoothing a little bit. Maybe that's a little too thick. There we go. And I'm going to trace around the outside of this. And I want it to be kind of, kind of bit wiggly, bit wonky, but nice and thick to make this a nice thick border to frame this image go back and forth along my stroke just to add slight variation to the thickness. There we go, that's the right idea. Okay, so the only thing left to do is to disable the background layer. If you know this sketch that I have in the background, we don't need that on for the final image. So we'll go over to our layers over here and we'll click on this layer and we can just press delete on the keyboard. That gets rid of our background sketch. And the only thing left to do is to save this file. So I'm going to click down here and click save. It's going to save the template to your Mockofun account. And then we can download this as an SVG. Okay, saving done. So we're just going to click download. And we're going to change the download type. You can download this in a variety of formats. There's obviously a JPEG. PNG is a uh, raster image that has transparency. Download the PDF and of course SVG. This is a vector image of all the vector strokes that you made over here. There we go, and it downloads right there in my browser. And when we open this up, you can see right there, and this is vector data. This is a vector file. You can open this in vector programs, use this as web graphics, whatever you need SVGs for, this would do you good. Okay, that's it. I hope you found this useful or at least entertaining. Please let me know in the comments below if you have any thoughts or suggestions, any questions, happy to help you out down there. And I hope you have fun trying the Doodler tool in Mockofun.